Here is a brochure for one of the most hated cars ever produced. Of course, that means I would absolutely love one. This is a brochure for the Morris Marina from October 1972. And today we're going to have a look through it and maybe you'll learn a thing or two. So here we are, two marinas on a very foamy beach. One's a coupe and the other a saloon. Of course, the more exotic of the two would be the coupe. But it was actually cheaper than the saloon because there are less doors and simpler body panels. You can see a bit of cost cutting coming through with the doors on the coupe, which are the same length as those on the saloon. So the coupe doors look a little bit too short for the body. The new Morris Marina, beauty with brains behind it. Beauty? Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with that. I think marinas are quite good looking. Designed by Roy Haynes, the same fella that did the Mark II Ford Cortina, and you can see more than a shade of the Mark II Escort in there as well that would be introduced in December, yeah, December 1974, uh, a few years after the marina. Brains? Well, I think it depends on who you ask. The Marina was always designed to be a simple car. No front wheel drive or clever suspension here. This was British Leyland returning to the simplicity that Ford did so well. The Austin brand would be more adventurously engineered cars, such as the Allegro, while the Morris brand was taking a retrograde step to conservative engineering to compete more directly with the Ford Cortina. You can see the little British Leyland badge up here next to the brains. And that's because it was the first BL car. The Maxi was a BMC design, so this was the first really. And most of the literature for the Marina promoted BL the company, as well as Marina the car. So this brochure starts off with the bottom of the range, the 1.3 coupe, complete with a picture that shows off those saloon doors up here. And it talks over here about aerodynamic styling, but it doesn't give any figures. Interestingly, there were never any published figures for the Marina's drag coefficient, but it was around 0.45 for the coupe, based on a computer simulation done by a good friend of mine. Uh, by modern standards, that's completely hopeless, but by 70s saloon standards, it's quite good. It's better than a 1979 Mustang coupe, for example, which had a CD of 0.49. This being the 1.3 Marina, it uses the old faithful A-Series engine that you'd also find in a Mini. The A-Series was a great little engine, and they market it here by quoting its rally pedigree, and that it's one of the most proven engines out there. In the Marina, the 1275 A-Series made about 60 horsepower, meaning 0 to 50 in 12 and a half seconds. And there's something else that's interesting. Before the switch to metric, Britain always measured 0 to 50 times. We tend to do 0 to 60 nowadays to bring it in line with 0 to 100 kilometers an hour. The bane of all older cars is rust, and lots of brochures boast about the preventative measures on their cars, and that's no different here. Every square inch of the marina body shell is electro-coated with an even layer of protection, which is then sealed in by deep gloss paint. And then there's something else you seldom see, and which some manufacturers would prefer you to forget. The underside. Every model in the marina range has an underbody sealing compound applied before it leaves the factory. 64 square feet of protection goes onto every car. Yet the application of underbody sealing compound is by no means standard on other cars of this kind of price. It's just British Leyland's way of ensuring the marina enjoys a long and useful life. So note the grill on the front of the 1.3 marinas. Marinas all had different grills depending on the engine. So as we flip the page, we see the 1.8 coupe, which in my opinion has a much smarter grill. That's the easy way to tell between 1.3 and 1.8 litre Series 1 Marinas. On this page, we go more in depth on specs. There are three available at this point, Deluxe, Super Deluxe, and the Sporting TC that we'll take a closer look at on the next page. The Marina 1.8 used the B Series engine, the same one fitted to the MGB. And in fact, it mentions it here probably to try and make it look more exotic or something. But on standard 1.8s, it had a single SU carburetor. I think the dashboard of the Series 1 Marina is really, really nice, even if this one's got the fake wood and the most horrific shade of green I've ever seen on the seats. Although I think this might be lime flower, correct me if I'm wrong or tell me if I'm right, uh, which is quite nice in real life, so maybe it's just terrible photography. I don't know. Over the page, and here is the 1.8 TC Coupe, with twin carburetors, 93 brake horsepower, and 0-50 in 8.75 seconds. And that's pretty quick for a cheap family car from the era. 
and I think that looks absolutely glorious. I mean, I, I think it looks great. I mean, think what you want about marinas, but I think that looks wonderful. But over here is where it kind of starts to fall apart because it starts to try and liken the marina to its other British Leyland stable mates. Torsion bar suspension, similar to our E-Type. I'm not even gonna bother going into this one. The engine one is fair enough though. The twin car B series is the same one using the MGB. The name TC is an initialism for twin carburettors. This interior shot shows the dials with a tachometer because it's posh. Uh, and it's the same cluster as the Mini 1275 GT. Uh, but yeah, that, that looks awesome. I do really like the way marinas look. Uh, what they might lose in engineering prowess is more than made up for by the styling. I just think it's fantastic. And um, I, I think it's better than a Mark II Escort. Please don't shoot me. And now we start again with the 1.3 Saloon. Again with the different grille. BL seems to care a little bit too much about the fact that the Marina has two proper body styles. It's just a bit of a shame they didn't fit the proper doors to the coupe then, isn't it? Um, and there's Steph's Marina up there. I know she's probably watching, so there you go. And now it really starts to repeat itself again, but here are the 1.8 saloons. And the most famous part of the Marina over here on the left, if I... There you go. Most famous part about the Marina, the door handles as fitted to the Austin Allegro, late Ginetta G15s, the Ginetta G21, Lotus Eclat, Lotus Elite, Lotus Esprit, the five door Range Rover, the Reliant Scimitar, the Trident Clipper and the Triumph TR7. And there are a few other oddball cars that also use Marina door handles. And if you really want to know which ones, then buy Sniff Petrol's new book. This isn't paid, it's just really, really bloody boring and I love that. Uh, that's where I got this list from, so that's quite good. Uh, now for a really nerdy piece of information, because these pictures were all taken way, way, way before the launch of the car, obviously, but it was so early they hadn't yet tooled up for producing rear door handles for the saloon. So the front ones contain the locks. I don't know whether you can see that on the camera, but the front ones have little locks in there. But of course the rear ones don't. And you can see if you look really, really carefully, I don't think you can see this on camera, but oh well, uh, these cars that they took pictures of for the brochure have front door handles all the way around. So there are actually locks in the rear doors there, but they've airbrushed over them. But if you do look close, it's really, really obvious that they've just filled in the lock to make it look like a proper saloon. I think you might be able to see it a little bit easier on this marina. I don't know. I can see it really clearly on the brochure, but I don't think you can in the camera, but yeah, so there you go, that's a really nerdy piece of information. Um, and another thing about these shots is that the car had changed by the time this brochure was published. The trim was all slightly different and the wipers had changed, for example, uh, so you couldn't get the car that was actually depicted in this brochure. Ah, TC Saloon. It just looks awesome. I absolutely love the way the Series 1 Marina TC looks with its mad wheels in particular colours, the bits of black trim here and there, the grille on the front as well is fantastic. Um, yeah, especially the C-pillar vents which just look cool. And I think from this angle, the saloon looks better than the coupe. Uh, I, I don't know. I like the coupe, but I think from this angle, the saloon. Anyway, enough power for 100 miles per hour and sports seats. It is just a shame that we didn't get the 2.6 litre straight six in the UK because I'd genuinely be looking for one right now. And now accessories, because they're all very, very 70s. I mean, look at that. Wing mirrors and a lockable fuel filler cap. The map reading lamp's a little bit odd as well, even if it is very useful, it just looks a bit odd. The best thing though, I think, is the brake adjustment spanner, which, you know, things you absolutely do not see advertised in brochures anymore. Yeah, under standard features, there is, it says ergonomic interior and column stalks. I mean, you know, within 10 years, this style of advertisement was so old fashioned. Ergonomics and design moved on so quickly up until about 1990 that it's weird seeing an Austin 1100 and an Austin Metro built only 10 years apart. But anyway, I'm starting to ramble a little bit here. So here are the specs for the coupe. And then over here, if I can lift that flap up, 
you see the special tuning kits available from Abingdon to make your marina really fast. Um, and then finally, on the back, specs for the saloon. So there we go. Uh, tell me your marina stories in the comments, I'd quite like to hear them. Please keep liking, keep subscribing, and I'll see you on Wednesday when we'll have a look at more marinas. Lovely. In fact, this kind of more marinas. Fantastic. I'll see you then.